Hi everyone, I'm Michael Gordon. It's been a relatively slow week for economic news, but we did have the latest release from StatsNZ of the Household Living Price Index. So this is a measure that takes the information from the CPI and converts it into something that's more like a cost of living measure. The main difference between the two is how they treat housing costs. Now, it was still a pretty ugly picture. Uh, living costs were up 5.2% in the last year. So that's less than the 5.9% rise in the CPI, but it's still the fastest pace we've seen for quite some time. And moreover, no group was spared from this, which really highlights just how widespread price increases have become. Low-income households actually saw the smallest increase for a change. That was mainly because a greater share of their spending is taken up with rents, and rents actually rose by less than the broader CPI. That said, rents have been rising, and if anything, the pace has been picking up again recently. So that may be a bit disconcerting if you thought that turning off the migration tap and building a bunch more houses would take the pressure off the housing stock. We've got some work underway that suggests that we have been eating into that housing shortage, but there's so much accumulated that we've got a way to go, and we're not really looking at fully eliminating that until probably the middle part of this decade. Just turning back to the cost of living in general, uh, a point I raised last week was that in a tight labour market, you'd think that workers are in a good position to be negotiating cost of living increases. However, wage growth has actually fallen behind inflation in the last year, so for many people, they have effectively taken a pay cut. So when are workers going to get a break? Uh, well, I see this playing out in two phases. The first phase, which we're in right now, overall inflation is very high, and in large part, it's driven by global forces, which reflects disruptions from COVID. Now, this is just a straight cost shock. Someone has to wear it, and unfortunately, workers are not going to be fully shielded from this, even in a tight labour market. So when we get into the second phase, which may be towards the end of this year, Overall inflation will be much lower than it is today, but it will also be much more driven by local forces, and specifically that tight labour market. So I think it's at that stage we're more likely to see wage growth outstripping inflation and start to see workers actually get ahead of the game. Talk to you next week.